the European Defence Agency was created in 2004 to help member states improve their military capabilities in carrying out crisis management and peacekeeping operations under the European Security and Defence Policy. No military operations can succeed without efficient and secure logistics support, which was the topic of the third annual EDA conference held in Brussels in February 2008. All the conferences organized by the agency are important, it's the third one, and uh, the question, the issue of logistics is fundamental for maintaining the operations in which the European Union is engaged, operations that uh, normally take place far away from our own countries, that requires therefore a lot of preparation and a lot of logistics. Whether there's a role for the private sector in partnership with the military to provide this support was the main issue at the conference. Some 200 representatives from government, the armed forces, industry, EU bodies and other international organizations gathered to discuss how this partnership might most effectively work. We do it all the time and we are now contracting in Chad and Central Africa. Why? Mainly because the transformation of European forces to make them more deployable and sustainable has not been completed yet. And because also member states never commit enough logistic assets to our operations. It's a learning process, I think. And we should not think that the industry can provide everything at a, at a lower cost. It's only in areas where industry has a capability, maybe based on equipment that we build or, or supply chain management routines that we have, where we can provide more cost-efficient solutions. But, I mean, I, I'm not saying that the industry can do everything cheaper than military forces can do. But there is some, some new areas which we should explore in that way. Contractor support to military operations is not new. And over the last decade, this practice had significantly increased in scale and scope. The military has long used contractors to provide supplies and services to deployed forces in order to free up military personnel for frontline duty. But whilst the outsourcing of life support systems is undisputed, Outsourcing capabilities in areas considered to be purely military, such as providing helicopters in a conflict zone, was seen as more problematic, as observed in current operations. Can outsourcing logistics help? We spoke this morning about the lack of helicopters, and I'm wondering, what prevented you from uh, finding a solution? We are invited to find solutions, and there are times we suggest. It's the military who decide whether they want that service or not. Um, technically it's very feasible, uh, one has to look at what um, protective aids may or may not be required and you, when you start entering the area there, in a particular area, should you be using straight um, civilian type solutions which give you value or are you going to go to as a military where the value reduces. Another topic discussed during the conference was the question of an integrated approach to logistics and the need for efficient coordination between contractors and the military. This was particularly evident in an example given by the World Food Agency on supplying food to the civilians at the same time as the military to avoid confrontation on the ground. If they go hungry, they're going to riot. So humanitarian aid delivery is important as well as military and peacekeeping operations are important. One of the problems facing private sector support of EU military operations lies in establishing efficient mechanisms for multinational cooperative contracting, and add to this the number of member states involved. But contractors attending the conference seem to be coming to terms with the need for this. As a European company, we must deal with, that, with uh, all these uh, uh, countries, all these uh, armies, air forces and uh, and working in this European environment. So this is the future. We cannot escape of that. Practical experience and studies have highlighted the cost effectiveness of private sector support. But once a military organization has decided to work in partnership with private companies, how fast and effective is this process? The new procurement system set in place by the European Defense Agency aims at responding to the military's need for speed. We were able to contract within 10 days and that is normally not possible in, in national procurement procedures. So Europe is flexible. Many organizations attended the conference to explore the different issues raised by the increased need for partnerships between the military and private organizations in the area of crisis management and peacekeeping. We want to know about um, what's going on in uh, cooperation with uh, civil companies and I want to um, 
pick up some ideas from this uh, conference. I think one of the areas for growth in the military, particularly actually in co coalition operations, is probably in outsourcing, certainly in outsourcing of the more high-tech elements, um, air traffic, uh, CIS services, that sort of thing, that's of great interest to us, so we want to help that develop within, uh, for the EDA and within Europe. What is really striking is that uh, the speeches, they, they uh, represent a, a cascade of a lot of topics, uh, political down to operational uh, and tactical questions, and that is, I think, the most interesting thing, that you get a variety of perspectives. The conclusion of the conference wasn't so much the question of whether the private sector has a role to play in partnership with the military in crisis management and peacekeeping. It was more a question of how everybody would work together. It is not a question whether industry stands ready to support. It is a question how we can organize this support. This is a conference which uh, get together military experts, uh, uh, planners, uh, civilian experts on military matters, uh, and uh, companies which are engaged uh, on potential operations of this nature, quite cooperate with them. And therefore, to have this dialogue between the two sectors, the military proper and the civilian proper, companies, etc., is very good. The European Union has an aim to engage as many people as possible on operations which are not uh, operation which signify war on the country, signify peace, bringing peace where uh, peace doesn't exist, and bringing reconstruction where it's needed. And therefore the cooperation of everybody is a must.